Every year, close to 800,000 people take their own life. And there are many more people to attempt suicide. Every suicide is a tragedy that affects families, communities, entire countries, and has long-lasting effects on the people left behind. In the last 20-30 years, we've seen a rise in suicide attempts. Suicide occurs throughout the lifespan and was the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year old globally in 2016. That is a lot of people trying to attempt suicide. The question is why? This is Tony J. Salimi. I'm the author of five times international best-selling book, A Path to Wisdom, and multi-award winning book, Hashtag Loneliness. I'm also the co-creator of Living My Illusion documentary series, uh, the first episode called The Truth Hurts, which has become now a global phenomenon. And today I have with me a very, very special guest, uh, Paul McMonagall, who also is one of my clients who's been working with me for the last three years, uh, helping him um, dissolve a lot of the emotional things that led to Paul living with an, a numerous mental health issues, but also attempting to commit suicide at the moment we met. That's true, yeah. So, suicide does not just occur in high-income countries or somebody who works in a high-pressure jobs. Actually, suicide occurs to any human being, including myself. And as Paul can vouch in here, who actually read my book, Hashtag Loneliness, I openly talk about what led for me to attempt to commit suicide, which made me a better teacher, also focused me more to actually understand the psychology behind suicide and how I can help more people in the world. And this is how our past cross, uh, Paul. So can you tell us, uh, the audience, a bit about uh, who you are and what you do? So my name is Paul McMonagall, I'm a systems lead and I work in the oil and gas industry, currently based in Scotland, but I've worked throughout the UK and as Tony mentioned, our paths crossed when, when I was ready to contemplate to commit suicide for the second time, having previously survived a, a previous suicide attempt. And looking back, Paul, from what you know now, what are the some of the main um, triggers and stresses in your life that really led you to uh, attempt to commit suicide? So, some of the main triggers and stresses in my life was, uh, as Tony mentioned, as I suffered from a multitude of mental health illnesses, it's uh, the stigma attached to mental health and talking about mental health and how people are so uncomfortable talking about it and how they suffer in silence and they suffer in silence in their, their home life and in their work life and in their social life and the reason I know all that is because I went through all that as well and it's like a pressure, this pressure all built up inside of me where I just didn't want to go, in, go on anymore and since I've been sharing my mental health journey with Tony in the last three years via LinkedIn, Facebook, other platforms, social media platforms. I now have um, several people who work in the oil and gas industry and other industries contacting me and sharing with me how they are depressed, how they're lonely, how they've got anxiety and also their own suicidal thoughts. They share all this with me and it's, it's quite disturbing to now see how deep it runs within the oil and gas industry and some of the other industries that the people have contacted me who what they work in. So uh, basically not only affects your personal life, your family life, actually having that sort of mindset uh, and those stresses around you actually impact every single employee out there. But normally we don't really see many employees coming out publicly and openly share their stories. Uh, why are you doing that? So. One of the reasons is um, I've, I went through um, NHS mental health treatments from the age of 17 till the age of about 38 when I crossed paths with you and 
just what I now know, because what I went through in the NHS really didn't work for me. And from what I now know of working with an expert like Tony and seeing how my life's transformed, I would love to see this uh, work go global, your own work go global with TGSE method and be adopted into workplaces, be adopted into health systems because I know how much it's transformed my life and my family's life, how much I've transformed at work and I know this, this what I do and what you do, you can do this for anybody because Tony's method truly works. Well, um, a lot of people are there at risk and in my work I actually work with a range of issues uh, that stem from various mental health issues but also family pressures, work pressures, leadership challenges, uh, financial challenges and um, I would say uh, challenges that every day uh, come from facing the ever evolving life around us and the stresses that come from particularly let's say uh, various mental disorders uh, when we go through depression and most people actually go down the route of actually not tackling the root cause of what is it that make them feel they want to commit suicide but actually they grab in a glass of uh, beer or they go the route of alcoholism or they start smoking, they develop addictions, they develop certain phobias or simply their behavior changes. So uh, uh, this taboo about suicide is not really me. Uh, it's what we're really discussing in this video where basically normal people like yourselves uh, and people who work in the corporate world actually can be infected by uh, what I call in hashtag loneliness the virus of the modern age. Uh, which is all of those different, uh, I would say, stresses in your environment, especially in the work and uh, in the oil and gas industry where the environment is pretty much uh, male dominated, where men normally don't talk about issues such as mental health, issues such as gossiping at work, for instance, which can lower self esteem, self confidence, and also it lowers the productivity. So what are some, in the last 20 years, Paul, before you even started working with me, uh, you saw many different behaviors in the work environments that actually, uh, I would say, contributed towards your illness. So what are some of those stresses? So some of the stressors that I, I noticed during my 25 years in the oil and gas industry is how when, when I go to work, it's still a, a macho environment, it's male dominated and it's a macho environment and it's almost as if you're two people, for me it was like being two people and I believe it's the same for a lot of other people in the oil and gas industry where what you've really gone through on the inside you don't tell people about, you project a false image of being able to withstand anything, of being rugged, of being macho, of being tough, I can do this, I can do anything. But as I said, since I've started sharing my story, I've had numerous people come to me and say, I feel the same as you used to feel, Paul. What you share is what I'm currently going through. And it's, um, it's quite worrying for, for me to see this, but also for my industry, because other people aren't seeing this, they aren't really aware of it, and they don't know how deep this problem's going, but I do. As a team leader, how important it is for your team to be able to openly to talk about those issues? Yeah, so I was recently promoted to systems lead for an upcoming shutdown and I'm now running a team and I know uh, next week when, I, when the shutdown starts I'll be delivering toolbox talks, I'll be asking guys in the morning how they're feeling and a lot of people will just say I'm fine, but are they really fine? Because I can't read minds and I, I don't really know and as I was mentioned there's such a stigma attached to mental health in, in oil and gas industry but in other industries, banking, finance, those type of industries and it can be worrying because I've got a responsibility to these, to these people, I've got a responsibility to my, to my employers, to the client that I'm seconded to and you just, you just don't know, you really don't know what people are going through because when you have mental health problems you do your best I think to hide them and 
not show them because people see it as a or perceive it as, as a sign of weakness, especially in a male dominated environment. So a lot of people think that uh, suicide is only linked up to a lot of mental disorders, but what I've seen working with organizations and uh, closely working with teams and people like Paul, it's the link that basically how suicide is also linked towards when people are experiencing uh, conflicts in themselves and also with other team workers around them. So when there is no cohesion and coherence and sort of engagement in a team environment when people can work together and be able to share together and being able to openly talk about issues such as uh, suicide, such as depression, such as gossips, such as basically when you feel uh, devalued at work for the work that you do. But also I've seen uh, uh, hidden mental and physical and uh, I would say emotional violence in, uh, in some industries where I have been asked to dissolve those conflicts and help people and help organizations actually engage their teams much better. And you can vouch for this because you have seen how your awareness of what's possible when you actually transform your own mental set and when you actually empower your own mindset can do in the teams around you. So what has changed as a result of this work that you've been investing in yourself, frankly, because you've been working with me and you've been committed to that and you've gone through a lot of tears. So it's never been like just, uh, we don't just laugh out there or just talk about it, but uh, there's a lot of relief that happens to you when you have somebody, you can talk about issues that normally most people fear in the corporate world to open up from fear from being not good enough, for fear for being judged, uh, being gossiped, for fear, the worst thing is actually losing their jobs. Yeah, so uh, some of the biggest fears that I, I, I initially had to go through when I started, started sharing my story was, will I lose my job? Um, will people start gossiping about me? Will people judge me, mock me and ridicule me? And yeah, that, that I didn't lose my job. But yeah, I did become a subject of gossip and people do judge me and ridicule me at times behind my back or to my face and I'm aware of that. But having a teacher and an educator like Tony it enables you to, because Tony teaches a uh, challenge and support. He teaches that I'll be supported but I'll also be challenged. So I don't live the illusion that when people do speak speak about me badly at work because, because I share my story. I don't have this illusion that uh, I'm not being supported because somewhere someone else will be and I see the balance in that. So it, that helps me deflect deflect the the comments and that I don't take them so personally. Uh, one of the things which I also see when I work with people that people who are very prone to suicide also people who are amongst vulnerable groups in companies and this could be also people who experience discrimination people who experience bullying at work people who experience for instance people who are migrants or refugees who might not feel uh, fully inclusive in the environment in which they work but also when it comes to people from different uh, groups minority groups lgbt community uh, and people who actually may be different from the normal environment in which most uh, company works. So uh, how important do you think is inclusion, diversity and empowerment and engagement of senior management and leadership is in tackling mental health at work, but also uh, encouraging people to be open about the issues that really triggers them to have those sort of suicidal thoughts. Yeah, so when managers and leadership are seen as um, leading with diversity and inclusion and leading with LGBT and mental health, it ripples down throughout the company because then the employees see that they care, that they are listening. But if they do the opposite, employees react in the opposite way and they see that they don't care and they, the, the employees feel not listened to, they feel undervalued and that shapes their behaviours at work, it can shape their behaviours, they could 
some employees may want to sabotage your work. They may build resentments against mm -hmm. the company, and it can lower the productivity. It can lower the performance. Ultimately, it will lower the company's profitability. So one of the the biggest challenges that Tony mentioned here has been seen as different to the norm. Mm -hmm. So people with um, mental health problems, they, they normally don't speak about it because they might see, I'll be perceived as being different to the norm and people will just want to be seen as being the same as everyone else in regards to mental health. Um, it's something I've, I've found that a uh, Maybe I'm now perceived as being a different to the norm because I'm so open about this. And uh, it's maybe a fear why other people don't talk about mental health because they don't want to be perceived as being different to the norm at work. They don't bring their full self to work. So what would change, let's say, in your work environment, in the environment uh, you consistently go there Monday to Friday, um, if uh, the mindset of the people around you were to change, especially around uh, mental health and around, I would say, the issues we just discussed. So, it's, uh, it's my belief that um, to really tackle mental health at work, you need to elevate the mindset of the entire company, of the workforce. So, currently, um, when I speak about mental health, I see uh, the people I speak about it with, they, they go silent and they, they go introverted within themselves and they don't really want to engage in the conversation. And it's, it's still, that's, that comes from like a fear consciousness. A lot of companies operate through consciousness, collective consciousnesses of fear. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can take that back to maybe people will think, if I start talking about this or if I reveal that I might have a mental health problem, will I lose my job? So it's, it's based on individuals' fear consciousness. Mm -hmm. Those fear consciousnesses collectively give the company a collective consciousness of fear as well. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that wherever I travel around the world, where basically how easily uh, all of those different, different disempowered states and uh, emotions such as fear, such as... I would say low self-esteem, low self-worthiness um, can actually impact the collective uh, 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 consciousness of an organization, which is in fact, we're talking about the well-being, the health of the organization. Because it's not only about our physical health, our, emo our mental and emotional health. When we go to work, guys, we bring everything about us to work. So this is what most organizations uh, are not trained to do. The people, uh, especially the senior management, uh, uh, are not trained to do because they haven't really specialized in the area when it comes to human behavior and truly understanding how the values works and how to align those values within the organization, but also capturing uh, the, I would say, the skewed perceptions that people built over a period of time and tackling the beliefs and the behaviors that uh, lower productivity, uh, lower the engagement of employees, lower the openness of employees being able to have some form of feedback mechanism about what the companies can do to actually create the environment in which the human capital can thrive. This is one of the things that you've been asking me to be able to um, help your company currently where you're working to actually do that and it would be an absolute pleasure to be able to teach them the things that you've been experiencing for the last three years because you know in your heart that they could benefit from that. So what is the the three lessons <coughs> pardon me that uh, you feel um, companies around the world would benefit but uh, from what you've been learning from me and the people you've met because you've met a lot of my corporate clients You've met a lot of clients that I do a lot of business coaching with and last night We were at the business book awards So you met more clients and you've seen with some of them. You've actually seen the progress yourself yeah. And by that I mean how employees feel separated from the leadership so in the industry I'm in the current company and um, the leadership is based in a location completely separate from most of their employees. 
you very rarely hear from them or see from them and it's also the way we communicate so we've became a, a world where we're technologically communicated we're communicating more now eh, sorry we're connected more now than we've ever been connected before and but through that we now use emails we use blogs and one of the keys of that separation is the lack of communication mm -hmm. so I, my awareness has grown since I've been working with you about how employees don't speak to one another anymore mm -hmm. how employees they don't speak so much they don't share so much and they're more engaged in putting earphones in and listening to music or whatever as they're working and I feel companies uh, maybe aren't aware that they, they maybe think leaderships maybe think it's fine I've sent a blog I've sent an email I've done this I've done this but when these arrive for me and others you just look at them and you pass them off and you carry on with your job yeah so one of the so there's there's actually three covered there there's a separation mm -hmm. within companies there's a disconnect within companies and there's also the the lack of communication mm -hmm. which is very damaging and most people aren't, aren't aware of that because they believe they are mm -hmm. it's like we so connected but disconnected and do you believe that uh, suicide is more common amongst men in where uh, they work in an environment which is not very open and supportive. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, because they definitely because people uh, will tend to suffer in silence. They will tend, especially men, they'll bottle everything up. They won't talk about it. They they it's down to skewed perceptions and perceptions that people will see see them as being weak, that they shouldn't be seen as being weak or that they shouldn't be seen as discussing these things and it contributes because it, it builds up a pressure inside of you and eventually some guys they just want a relief and the relief can come through death. And for you personally, I mean, it's um, you've had to overcome a lot of the fears and I've been working with you now for a period of time and every time you come down to London we tackle different issue that is almost like this puzzle around mental health and suicide that together we're working on actually assembling it together into a beautiful picture that makes sense to you yeah and um, while you were going through those 23 years of tremendous pain uh, what was the impact on your family on your friends and the quality of your life so, as you, as you rightly say, it was um, an unbelievable pain to wake up every day to. And uh, just to wake up every day in, in that pain and to, to go to work and to not feel supported, to feel that you actually had to hide it. Um, the impact was uh, I became very isolated from my, my family. Um, I became, I became an alcoholic. Um, I turned to drugs. I turned to self self medication. Even though at the time I wasn't really aware of that, that I was self medicating until I started working with you. Uh, and there was a lot of conflicts within my my family. I fell out with my brothers. Uh, other people seen the pain I was putting my parents through, but I couldn't see it. I was so. Uh, I feel like stuck in my head and stuck in my thoughts and just trying to survive every day and trying to get through every day but it also impacted uh, my friends because I never spoke about it much with my friends and they seen the destructive behaviours but they had no real awareness of, of why mm -hmm. of why I was that way and it was the same at work it was it was a uh, I didn't speak about it at work. I projected a false persona to people. Um, internally, I was dying and crippled with pain, and I just didn't want to speak about it because I was in like um, protective mode. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to protect my income. I wanted to protect my job. I had a home to pay for, a mortgage to pay for, food to buy, 
and I was doing everything with this protective mode but it was a false false sense of security mm -hmm. and I put up I put up hundreds of barriers to, to keep everything away from me to protect myself and that's um, that's some of the work that uh, as Tony was talking about for it to make sense to me why I why I done this. Mm -hmm. And we've had to break down those uh, those barriers over the last three years so I'm now able to talk and share the way I am and, and be authentic about this. But for me it's the awareness I now have of what I've done to myself, what I've done to others. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot, I know millions, hundreds of millions of people don't have this awareness. Um, they do have the awareness but currently they've not been taught it like I have. So they're not aware of it. And that's why I would love to introduce your work into my company, but not just my company, into the oil and gas industry. And watch the people's lives transform. Watch how they how they talk, how their language transforms, how they become more productive at work, how they perform better. And it's how they... I know they would build far more genuine connections, mm -hmm. genuine connections through genuine communications, and it's breaking down the it's breaking down those barriers where you. So I had to step into um, like an unknown territory, if you like. Yeah. Because but, and you've been inspired now for a while to really bring this unique work that uh, I'm flown by many clients around the world uh, to make a big difference. And you know personally uh, how painful it is, the impact this has, the challenges you had to overcome, and how it would help a lot of people in your environment to transform. So I'm really grateful for that, and I'm grateful to anybody who's watching this and going to take an action, because it, it is basically what you did. You actually took an action when you first time met me, you booked a consultation straight away, and you started doing the real work. And you also attended one of my seminars, Vital Planning for Elevated Living, which you got a flavor of it, but there's so much to expand on <laughs> because you've seen some of my clients who actually have been doing it second, third time and how their energy, behaviors, attitudes change in life and they become extremely clear what they want to do, but also extremely clear how they can be better managers, how can be better uh, senior managers, directors and team players, and how to actually communicate better with other people in a way that actually encourages openness, encourages diversity, encourages uh, inclusion, encourages engagement with other teammates around you, but also people you meet in your day-to-day -day life. Because after all, what's inside of you is extremely powerful. And for companies, you are a powerful asset and also for yourself, when you work in a place where you actually feel inspired, engaged and productive, there's no limit to where you can go. And also there's no limit to the kind of benefits you receive by being a more uh, engaged employee. And by actually being able to align what's important to you with what's important to your company and the customers you serve and the environment in which you all operate, uh, your organizational well-being will be transformed. And I've seen this in front of my eyes over and over and over with various companies and CEOs uh, of big companies that I have worked with, uh, for. That how by transforming themselves, by transforming their ability to communicate and to understand their own beliefs, their own values, their own perceptions, their own behaviors and their own stresses, and by diffusing, uh, diffusing those, they can actually become more of a conscious leaders and more of a employees that you actually want to work with. 